Hello my buckos! Today we're going over upcycling one-on-one -on -one for fashion. You might have already seen my little scholarship video that I did but I wanted to break out a video that just specifically went over upcycling in general and those tips outside of just my scholarship project. Hello and welcome to Book Courting by Bianca. I am Bianca and I am a fashion student and I am in my 30s which means that I've had many lifetimes and one of my previous lifetimes was working in sustainability and recycling and waste diversion. I kid you not. I also worked in an art gallery. Ask me, ask me about my weird, wonderful life. So obviously there are multitudes of ways to upcycle things, but I wanted to go over my biggest tips that I really hope are useful for just getting your feet wet in upcycling, especially for clothing and garments. I would highly recommend your first step being identify what materials you have and that can even go down to fiber content. I'd say this is especially important if you've never upcycled a garment and don't have a ton of experience working with knits and stretch because a lot of fast fashion is actually knits and stretch and even if it's not fast fashion a ton of the clothes that I have invested money in over the last few years have been stretch and knit and comfy things, right? So I'd say for your first project, you probably don't wanna work with material you're not familiar with, which is why this step is important. Theoretically, all garments have fiber content labels on them. Um, there's all these legal things around what gets on there and why, but theoretically that's there. So at least you're aware of what is in the clothes you're gonna upcycle. And if there's not a tag, there are tons of fiber content uh, tests out there in terms of just like people have done how you're to do a burn test or bleach test that you should totally check out and do those safely. Do those safely. Understanding fiber content only helps you understand like if you can sew a thing and if you feel comfortable sewing but like understanding then the design that you could do with it, the designs you can't do with it, but also other things like can you dye this or not? Is it polyester or is it natural? How is dye going to adhere to this? Do you have a specific set about like you only want to use natural dyes? It probably won't adhere as easily to certain things. These are just little things to consider. So think about fiber content. I also think thinking about fabric types working together, if you have to like Frankenstein things together, is a knit going to work against um, a non-stretchy material the way that you're placing it in your design? Other things like is it going to wash okay together like a knit against a linen? Is there going to be some funkiness in the wash? Is something going to shrink over time? on the seam line. You also are going to need to consider if you need to overlock edges or how to finish those seams if you have things that do shred or are going to need that extra touch. And speaking of shredding, again like seams, I think deciding on what kind of seams you want to do if you don't have a serger um, and it's a material that really needs a serger, really think about your alternatives because you can totally do zigzag stitch, you can fake overlock stuff on a home sewing machine but you just need to gain a little confidence in that. So if you don't already know how to do that, I'd say you probably want to take an old t-shirt and just start playing with that with scraps of it and seeing how comfortable you are with that. Other thing about seams though is that you can use existing seams in really creative and fun ways. So don't decide automatically that you're tearing it all apart if you are upcycling pieces. Think about like, do I just want to reuse the seams that are there? That's totally valid. If you are going to take pieces apart, I have some tips at the end about my tips on my best practices on how to do that. As you deconstruct garments, you're gonna want to hold on to those notions and those that hardware. So buttons and zippers are the most obvious hardware you're gonna want to hold on to, but I have a handful of things that I think are also useful. Any kind of bra um, padding or underwire, really useful to have if you're gonna remake a bodice of any kind. They can also be used, you know, you can use the padding for shoulder pads or building out any other things like if you're doing cosplay. This is also really helpful, these little underwire things in case you are building out cosplay or even like nicer bodice corset tops. Um, elastic, little elastic pieces, if you can salvage those, really good. You can make a scrunchie, a matching scrunchie to the piece that you're making. Bunch of little ribbon things. So I'd say, first of all, if there's a fun drawstring that's made out of self fabric, just snap that off, keep it, you might want it for a, an accompanying thing. It can make a little cute little button loop closure. Tons of opportunity there. Maybe not as obvious are the things that usually are the cheap or ribbons and things that hold the piece um, from the shoulder onto a hanger. Maybe this isn't as obvious to folks, but that clear tape is actually what a lot of people use to stabilize um, and knit clothes the shoulder seam. So 
hold on to this. Also, I found my, my bra pads, like I was talking about. So these can be used if you're doing a bodice, but it's also say if you want to creatively layer these, you can make shoulder pads or other kind of padding that you need for your garment. And then these little ribbons, again, like you're usually around the shoulder piece to hold it onto the hanger. I'd say these are nice to just hang on to in case you A, need to um, have some kind of stabilization inside something. Again, there's little things that like these come in handy for. Um, or you can even add a little decorative ribbon on things. But I'm always a fan of just holding on to little things because typically you can find a nice use for them. So after you've got an idea of the materials that we were working with, from the fiber content to how comfortable you are with it, um, and then you've also got an idea of the notions available to you and obviously to any notions you might have at the house, um, decide what you're gonna make from that. And that's where you can really shine in terms of design process. I have talked in depth before about my design process and I always am gonna recommend Pinterest. As much as I love a good DIY collage, you know, putting all that stuff and mod podging it, there's nothing like actually being able to easily access um, a ton of digital files and a library of things. So using those things as design ideas is really helpful. For me, looking at the materials that I had for what I was using, I had a lot of children's clothes. So I knew I had to do a lot of seam work and I might even have to do contrasting panels because I just didn't have enough materials to do these swaths of pieces, right? So think about those things as you're making the pattern pieces, you know, make sure you pin it on to the fabric before you cut anything to make sure that you're gonna have enough to do what you were thinking of. Um, and again, be open to the process, be open to doing things creatively and you know, doing contrast panels or off grain things. You're gonna have to go off grain. Like off grain is just going to be necessary probably when you're doing this. But you know, it's an intentional thing where it's like, well, where are some opportunities for you to go off grain as you're thinking about this? Here are some ways to restyle or revamp your materials or whatever you're upcycling. Dyeing is the easiest, most basic thing. If you have a bunch of stuff you don't like the color of, it is so easy to just get some Rit dye. They literally have it at grocery stores. They have them at Target, get it. Um, black is I think the most common color you can find. You just throw it all in a pot and dye everything black. You can also do other fun things like tie dyeing. You can even bleach dye. And I mean, this is also a conversation too. Let's just be real. Some of the things in the process of remaking clothes are not gonna be environmentally sound. You might encounter things that you're gonna do in terms of if you wanna reach your design that you're gonna need to use some chemical based dyes dare I say, even bleach, which is not me endorsing that you need to do that. I'm just giving options because I know that's a thing people want to have. So be considerate of that. I think the big thing too is there are opportunities for you to probably use natural dyes and fix scents, but if you're working with a lot of plastic, a lot of polyester, unfortunately you're probably gonna have to use a dye that's gonna be a lot stronger and also note that even natural dyeing, right? Like water is typically part of the process and using a bunch of water, arguably not the most environmentally sound move. But again, it's the process of, it's not that easy to be like, well, those things aren't environmentally sound because if you're remaking clothes and keeping it out of the landfill, that is a choice, right? So it's all these micro choices that we use to make these decisions. There's no perfect way to do any of this. Other ideas around material use, um, printing on them, you know, making a little block prints, um, embroidering on them, painting, just using fabric paints and just having a great time. You can even just make new textiles. I use quilting for some of my pieces, but I've seen poor people weave new fabric. They like make these cool designs. There's endless opportunity here. I think the best, best thing is just dive in and see which of these is like a fun thing that really speaks to you and your process. Um, and then here's a the thing that is probably the most useful in all of this, which is how to take apart your pieces. So seam ripping is always a pain, but especially when you're working with a lot of things that have surged edges, right? I put this last because I think the biggest thing is after you figure out your fabric and you figure out your design, then you can figure out how much of your stuff you really need to seam rip because you can make use of existing seams in your designs. But if you absolutely must seam rip things, here are the tips that I have. If you're working with a lighter, delicate fabric, especially a lot of fast fashion things, and the um, seams shred, as you're working with them, you're probably just gonna, for, gonna wanna forego actually seam ripping it because that will just probably shred that entire seam allowance that you had there. If that is the case, you're just wanna, gonna wanna cut really close to that seam and just 
if you can give up that extra seam allowance. It's what like three fourths or whatever, like it's not that much, a quarter of an inch, whatever's left. It's also a time and patience thing. Like it's probably gonna take you a ton more time for those delicate fabrics than it would for a denim where you can like rip up a little and probably tear and rip and tear and it'll be fine. Other types around this are what you use to actually cut through the thread and the seam. A good old seam ripper is always nice, but if you're working with overlocked edges, you're gonna get tired, especially if you're doing a ton of it. So I really recommend Safely, this is like for adults only or under adult supervision, using either a razor blade of some kind or an electric razor. These are going to be sharp, so please take all the precautions you can. So I have an X-Acto, I have a bunch of other things like Ulfa Crafts supplies to try to just like cut through those seams really quickly. You will probably still cut into the fabric with some of these because they're really sharp. Electric razors have the ability to have little safety edges on them, but also they might eat up the fabric, which happened to me a bunch of times. So I'd say like those are alternatives if you really need to just cut through that seam and you don't wanna just use scissors for some reason. <laughs> The fair warning is with those, you might cut into the fabric itself, it might happen, but also you might be able to figure out a way to do it really easily. Like if you have a bunch of people helping you, they can hold the fabric and you just gently cut and slice that thread, you might be fine. While we're here though, I do wanna talk about taking apart a sweater to make yarn. I didn't take a ton of professional video of this process because this was mostly just for some shorts, reels, TikToks, Tic Tacs, Tic Tac Toes. I will show you the videos I have and the basic steps are you take your sweater, you figure out where the actual seams are and you need to find that piece of yarn that's connecting the seams and rip that out first. You don't wanna actually cut into the knitted part because then it's just gonna all unravel unless like that's a style choice. But like if you're actually trying to salvage the yarn you don't wanna do that. And then somewhere around the tops of the pieces like the shoulder seam, the neckline, um, you will be able to find um, somewhere in the top row. You can start unwinding that. Honestly, you can also operate at a loss for the top row and just cut into it and start pulling it out because it should, knitwear should unravel. Knitwear, no, specifically knitted sweaters. You don't want to unravel knitwear. Like you, no, you don't want to do that. If it's like a knitted sweater, you can do this. So you can unravel it. I'd say I felt like my biggest thing was I don't have like a, whatever it is to like wind the spools on but I did have cardboard and so I basically made like cardboard spools and just wound it around and especially if you have a sweater that has like intertwined colors and stuff you're gonna want extras to like wind each color on as the pattern goes back and forth. Probably easiest to do this with like a single yarn sweater for your first go. You might come across some issues if you have a high pile yarn or the dreaded metallic yarn because the sweater I took apart had a metallic thread in the white thread and the like that made the majority of the garment and my god the pain but I wound those around those spools and then I took my iron on a steam setting and just steamed those to hell and back and they flattened out and then I could use them for other things I use them for some needle lace pieces because I don't crochet or knit anymore there's only so much room in my head for crafts and those those were there in junior high and they're gone now, baby. We're all about lace and niche stuff now. So that's how you would deal with yarn. If you wanted to salvage the yarn from a sweater or something, again, you're not gonna wanna do that for knitwear because you can't, you, you don't wanna remake, no. What are you gonna do with that thread? 